How many times am I going to have to do this video before I'm actually happy with it? Anyway, come on back to the kitchen. We got something cooking. I appreciate you guys joining me today. This is a little different concept for me. Uh, the video had an awful lot of uh, noise pollution, so we're going to do a voiceover today and see how that works out. All I'm doing here is just prepping the vegetables. I'm not exactly cutting them up just yet. Just cleaning them up, washing them, peeling them, prepping them. We're going to come back to these in just a few moments and get them all diced up. This process could very easily have been left out of the video, but I wanted a little bit of time to talk to you, so I figured we'd have something going on there for you to look at while I chat. The uh, soup that I normally make uh, is a little bit different than this one. I actually found this recipe online, and even though I'm not following the recipe to the letter, um, there were some things in it that I thought were interesting. So I decided I would try that out today and, and see how that turns out. The recipe that I found interesting was online at, uh, let's see, thebossykitchen.com. Yep, thebossykitchen.com. And she did say that this recipe needed to be followed exactly the way that she is presenting it and to trust her. I didn't. It's a pretty standard soup recipe. But this particular one is uh, very mild. Um, in fact, uh, you may see a jalapeno pepper there on the screen, but that's for a garnish uh, for serving the soup. And I've got to tell you, that didn't work out for me at all. Now, the online recipe calls for these onions to be separated from the other vegetables and, and used in a different way. And we'll get to that in just a moment. That's why we put them in their own little bowl. Uh, this is the uh, Mexican squash that I like to add to the soups. It just adds a nice good texture to it. I'm going to dice these potatoes up and they're going to go in their separate bowl as well because we're going to uh, wash them. I like to wash the potatoes after cleaning them and help remove some of that uh, starch residue. So they'll just sit in their little bowl in that cold water while we're doing all the rest of the other preps. We'll drain that water out, of course, before we actually add it to the, uh, to the soup. Geez, I, I don't know why I'm cutting up this garlic. I have a, a jar of diced garlic in the refrigerator that could very easily have been used. But here I go. Now the Roma tomatoes here too, um, they're going to go in their own separate bowl as the onions did. This is something that I got from her online that was very interesting and well you'll see in a few moments how they turn out. But uh, they're very firm for Roma tomatoes. Uh, Roma tomatoes are definitely the ones you want to use for cooking. Uh, they're not much of a salad tomato at all. But I cut them up in uh, what I would consider maybe bite-sized wedges 
and we're going to set those off to the side here and save them for uh, kind of a special project. Now I add cabbage to soups from time to time and I actually may have added too much cabbage to this one. But cabbage does cook down and almost disappears in the soup. We're going to add this diced cabbage uh, to the bowl of vegetables for the soup. That bowl there has got the carrots, the celery, and the Mexican squash. Yes, there is a name for the Mexican squash, but I don't know how to pronounce it. There we have it. There's all of our vegetables that we're getting ready for, uh, as well as the chicken thighs. There's only two chicken thighs there, and um, that was probably a little too few. So there you are. That's the ingredients that we're going to start with with our soup. And uh, we're going to move over to the stove here in just a few moments and uh, get things rolling. These vegetables here are going to be the toppings for uh, once the soup is done. That's your avocado, your jalapeno, your radish, and of course lime. Um, I have some cilantro there to the side. And that turned out to be the only topping that I used. Here's our vegetable assortment. We've got our uh, squash. Our potatoes are still soaking. We're going to rinse those in a little bit and uh, drain those before we add them to the soup. Now this is rice. This is what uh, caught my attention in her recipe online. We're going to do something interesting with that rice and I'm still questioning it. This is where I made a really big mistake. Her recipe had just salt. That was it. Just salt. No. Uh, I learned after this is over with that um, I should have spiced that sucker up. Um, it, it was bland alright. I mean, no, mild. And there's nothing wrong with mild, but when you're thinking of a, of a Mexican soup on a chilly rainy day, I don't want it to be so hot that it destroys the taste buds, but on the same token, I want some savory flavors in it. Get your oil in that pot and uh, get that pot hot. Get that oil hot, 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 hot. Now, what I like to do is I like to braise the chicken in that oil and I was a little impatient today and I didn't get them braised the way that uh, I would like to have them braised. She suggested just boiling the chicken. She actually said boil the chicken with nothing but the garlic and the salt. And just, that's it. Um, I decided that I was going to stick to my traditional way and and braise the chicken. And again, I didn't wait long enough. That chicken is still very pale. But uh, it, in fact, it's so much stuff uh, it's alive, it's wanting to kick the pot right off the damn stove. Well, let's get, let's get the pot back on the fire and get that sucker hot. Okay. Now see, there's our onion and our garlic. And where my mistake was is the garlic should have been with the chicken and according to her recipe the onion should not. The onion should have been with the rice and tomatoes. So this is where you know she'd probably kick me in the tukas right now. But then again that rice, tomato and onion side it's not something that I'm familiar with. So it clearly did not turn out the way she intended. Well, let's go ahead and get this rice dish started. Here's our uh, avocado oil. We're going to get into the cast iron skillet. And we've got to get that hot. Now, there's some controversy there because the warning is not to burn the rice. We actually just want to toast the rice. But you'll see here in a moment uh, where my dilemma comes in. Well, 
What do you think that was? What, 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 what's that all about? I just can't seem to leave it alone. Well, the pot has got the chicken, the garlic, the salt, and the um, onion sauteing there in the, the pot. We're going to add the water now and uh, get our broth started. Uh, I used four cups of water. Uh, I'm not cooking a large quantity, that's why I only did two chicken thighs. Again, should have done more. There we go with our skillet. Now, uh, I mentioned earlier that this was a rice dish. It's not a rice dish. It's, well, you'll see. And, and that little uh, measuring cup of rice, it's far too many. Far, far, far too much rice. That's going in the trash. There we go. Now, um, we're going to let this rice toast here for a little bit. And uh, it's going to be beautiful. It, it looks like it's going to take for a long time to do it. So just be patient, but watch it. You don't want to burn it. Well, at this point is where the onion should have been added to the rice and the onion should have been melted down, but coulda, woulda, shoulda. Instead, we're just going to add the tomatoes straight into the dry rice. And I mentioned dilemma. This is it. Those tomatoes have got to cook down. How do you cook those tomatoes down in toasted rice that you don't want to burn? So, this, this took my attention. Now, this, I've never made Spanish rice before, but this kind of looks like what Spanish rice might start like. Um, this might give me an idea for the future. Maybe I'll try to make some sort of a Spanish rice, uh, sauteing it in the pan with toasted rice and all. Well... I, I don't know. I digress right now. This is uh, not the intention. So, let's just see how this is going to turn out. Okay, this is uh, this is interesting because um, that beautiful rice and tomato, it actually looks pretty nice, but instead of being a dish that's going to stand on its own, it's, it's actually going to go right on into the soup stock. I could also see a problem here too, because that should have been a nice rolling boil. It clearly was not. Oh, oh it's hot. You can see the steam, but definitely not as hot as it should be. Um, but that's okay. We'll, we'll go ahead and give it some time and uh, let it do its thing. So in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get the uh, garnishes all sliced up and ready to go. And, you know, I've got to notice something here. It seems to me that I keep finding all of the bad things that I did in trying to follow somebody's recipe online that was clearly just a suggestion. So, uh, don't get me wrong, the soup turned out to be really good, but uh, I definitely had to do some tweaks. But while it's boiling and it's coming up to a real full boil, we're going to go ahead and slice up a, a few of the things here. Um, the radishes are very popular in, in the Mexican culture and in salads and as garnishes and everything, but uh, I found this particular radish just a little too strong and once I put that on my soup, uh, I ended up finding it uh, getting tossed over my shoulder. Not the soup, of course, just the radish. Now, oh, gosh, that just got squirted. Well, that's a, that's a very juicy lime. That 
it's okay. I like lime. I like juicy too. Of course, it's better in a margarita, but we'll t we'll try it on soup. So there we go. There we go. Now we got us a nice little uh, soup roar. And we're gonna add the potatoes that we rinsed off and. We're going to try to get all those vegetables in there. And, and again, nothing has been measured out. I basically looked at the size of the pot that I had to work with and the different types of vegetables that I wanted to put in. And I scaled back on some of the vegetables that I thought would take up too much room and added some vegetables in that I thought would uh, allow room for the others. Um, and we're going to give that some time. and. We'll come back in a few moments. Now this has been simmering for some time now, maybe about 25 or 30 minutes. I'm going to take that chicken out and debone it. We're going to chop up the meat and just add it right back into the soup again. There you are. Nice bite-sized morsels. We need to get all of that uh, slimy skin off of that chicken too. There's our tomato sauce. That's going to add a little bit of color to the soup as well as the flavor of the sauce itself. Lord knows at this particular point that soup does need some flavor. Don't get me wrong, it's got some wonderful vegetables in it if you like the flavor of just vegetables. Man, I sure am a negative nail today, aren't I? I don't mean to be, it's just that uh, I've had such high expectations for this soup. And I thought that I could make it work with just the flavor of the vegetables and that little bit of salt and that little bit of pepper. And that's where I was wrong. Now this is a nice treat. We're going to heat that skillet up and toast us some corn tortillas. Now, again, uh, corn tortillas, I, I'm not a big fan of. I much prefer flour. But uh, I wanted something as traditional as I could get for today. And corn tortillas was on the list. Well, that last one looked nice and toasty. So here we are, folks. We're ready to serve up. looks pretty good. It's very thick, a lot of vegetables, a lot of fiber in that bowl right there. A lot of fiber. Yeah. Let's just pick, oh, no, 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 let's sit that back down, it's a little hot. Why don't we just scoot it over closer to the pot so it's easier to, uh, yeah, yeah, there you go. We'll scoot that over to the pot so we can get the juice there. That's not so bad looking, is it? I still think it's a little pale. Okay, definitely got to add the cilantro. That's that's. I think that the next time I'm just gonna go ahead and cook the cilantro into the soup. Uh, about the same time I put the tomatoes in. I kind of hesitated about that jalapeno there, and you're gonna see in a moment that yep, that jalapeno's gone. I did not want that. I've got to say that this soup turned out to be pretty good. It was absolutely best when reheated with an addition of some taco seasoning, a little bit more salt, a little bit more pepper. I want you guys to come back and see me the next time. Not sure what we're going to have, but I hope we always have a good time in the kitchen. Y'all have a great day. Bye now.